Hey what's up guys, we got a dog against Frank here, and yeah, I'm finally back to narrating videos. I know I haven't narrated in my last two I think, and basically that's about a week span so of no narrating, but I finally have found an opportunity to do it today, and I thought this was a pretty good match to narrate as well. Because like, sometimes I don't narrate if it's a bad match, or if it's like, not very much predicted, or if it's like, a sweep or something, or if it's, a, if it's not very like, entertaining match, sometimes I won't narrate, I'll just throw music onto it instead. Rather than just like talk about random stuff for like five minutes and not about the battle at all, kind of like I'm doing right now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, like today I figured this would be a good uh, match to narrate, and it's um, I'm actually able to have an opportunity to narrate today, so I figured why not. But uh, yeah, like I have actually have a question for you guys: What do you guys think of uploading music videos? Like mu not music videos, music battles. Like, do you prefer? the narrations, or do you prefer music? Like, I know pretty much everyone narrates nowadays, and very few people still throw music onto it. Uh, even Dysfunction, a guy who said he really disliked narrated videos, narrates a video once in a while, so that's how popular this thing is getting. Like, so yeah, like my question to you guys, what do you guys prefer? Like, I I'll still do both once in a while, because I'm not always able to narrate, but uh, just like wondering your guys' opinion on it. So there you go, there's my comment whoring question of the day. Uh, everyone else does that, so I might as well start doing it too, right? Peer pressure. Well, not much pressure, but still, I might as well just start doing it as well. Right? Uh, I went to U-turn thinking you might switch for some reason, but I don't know why, because even I knew that he would be able to truck off the rigging media pretty decently. Uh, but yeah, I go back to Jirachi because I figure you can take anything this one wants to throw at it and eventually maybe, we'll maybe knock it out with body slams and iron hints. And he knocks off my left over kind of sucks, but uh, it's alright I guess, it's not too bad, I can't really avoid it because I, I can't taunt that move, it's a physical move technically. I noticed that he only has the one um, layer of toxic spikes up, so I switch in my Conqueror to get the Guts boost on it, because you know, getting like only one layer of poison instead of badly poison is much better, because like, I, I even want to lose it more health each turn, right? And I figured it'd be a pretty safe switch, because like, like I said, Vaporeon can't really do much to Jirachi at all, so it can just sit here and keep attacking, keep wishing, until it'll eventually win because Vaporeon of course has no form of reliable recovery. So yeah, I just figured it'll be, it, 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 it's a pretty safe uh, little move here. And he goes for the Whirlwind there though, and I completely forgot that Drapion even learned that move. Which is kind of bad because I used Drapion a couple times last generation and that was my set too, that was Knock Off, Crunch, Toxic Bikes, and Whirlwind. And I completely forgot that, that, like, that, it, that it learned Whirlwind. I guess it's not surprising you think it learned Roar. Well, it learns Roar too, but... Like, like what? Like what? What is it flapping? Those things dangling from his head? Like, it flaps him that, that far, that, that hard, so be able to blow me away. But still, yeah, I forgot that it learned it. And I was kind of shocked when he managed to blow my Pokemon away, but... Uh, whatever. I go to my Hydreigon, or Sazendora, because actually I like the Japanese better. The Japanese name better. Which actually is a true for a lot of Generation 5 Pokemon. I like a lot... I like their names better, like... Conklin I think his name is better in Japanese. Hydreigon's Japanese name is better. Uh, Reuniclus is about the same as Rankalusa. It's actually a little bit easier pr to pronounce, which is weird. you think the Japanese version would be harder to pronounce. But no, it's the English version. Like, I keep screwing that up. I know I'm not the only one to do that either. It's Reuniclus, right? I've seen, I've seen like Reuniclus, or I've seen a bunch of stupid ways of saying that same thing. But it is Reuniclus, I think, right? But why the hell am I talking about Reuniclus? How do you name this now? So anyways, back to the battle. Uh, we got a Jirachi and Dustmar here, and I stay in knowing that I'd be able to get most of my health back. I knew the Wilk was going to come, so that's why I was hoping for the flinch from Iron Head, but whatever, I guess that's kind of a cheap way of playing anyway, for But it's fun, you know, I like Jirachi. But he misses it, which is good, because Wilk actually would kind of cripple it kind of badly, because I attack on the physical side of things, and of course I have no left always recovery anymore. So, I catch a good break there. I knew the plane split was probably coming, so I go out to Infernate because I think he has the lowest HP of all my guys left. And um, I should be able to do some damage in this thing with Overheat. And I'm guessing maybe he thought I was Specs or something, because, like, I really, Overheat probably wasn't going to kill from this health anyway. I was just trying to get it down low so I could kill with Hydra on after. But he switches out, and I go for the Overheat again instead of over predicting because I knew he was going to kill something if he switches. Because I know he has two bug types, one grass type. He has his Drapion under half, so that's of course going to kill from there. And he has Sharpedo, who of course would resist it, but Sharpedo can't defend himself like out of a wet paper bag, so it probably actually would kill from there. 
He goes up to Sharpino now, and I'm just gonna go straight for the close combat, and I guess he over predicted and did something. I'm not sure. He didn't protect or anything, and I'm actually able to get this thing killed, which is nice. And this is why I love mixing, you know, because like really, I, I haven't seen a lot this generation, but I think it's still powerful. You know, it's still good. It's still fast. It, it, it's as fast as the Musketeer trio, like, but everyone just stopped using it. I guess because, I don't know, weather kind of screws them over a little bit, but, you know, he's still good. He should still be used. I mean, I can understand not using him when Blaziken was around, because Blaziken pretty much would outclass him pretty badly. Like, the only thing Blaziken can't do that Inferno can is maybe lay down stealth rocks, but... Still, Blaziken's gone, so why the hell are you guys using Inferno? Use him, guys! Come on, he's awesome! I go for the taunt to force him to attack, and... For some reason, I thought he'd protect there, but then I... Like, I guess I forgot that I taunted, because, of course, he can't protect after that. So I really don't know what the hell I was thinking. But, uh, whatever. I go for the recovery here because I figured he's probably going to switch out, and he does, and he goes up to this Durant. And this is kind of why uh, him knocking off my Hydrogon's Triss Scarf earlier is really significant, because now I have nothing left that's actually faster than this thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to switch out here, thinking that he's probably going to do something. I don't know. I think I go up to Jelly Sin. What do I go up to here? I go up to Jelly Sin, thinking that maybe I can take like a open his like Choice Bandit or something. But he goes for the own claws, and he told me after that this is actually a hustle Durant. And unfortunately for me, as you're gonna see in a second, it has a lumberry. Because I do live this Stone Age and I go for the Will-O-Wisp, but his lumberry cures his status. And I'm thinking, oh fuck. I'm probably gonna scrub this thing though. Because like I said before, it outspeeds everything else I have left. And uh really I don't get swept by it, as you can see, because there's about three minutes left in this video, but it does like a decent damage to my team. I have to go for the Mach Punch here, and of course I have to um, sacrifice my Conqueror here, which kind of sucks because Conqueror could have done some damage if he was kept alive, but really his best, uh, what he really needed to do against this team was kill Sharpedo, and Sharpedo was already dead, so I guess it's not too bad losing him, I just, you know, actually wanted to sweep with Conqueror, because I've swept with his second counterpart this gen, but I haven't swept with him, so I kind of wanted to get that. But oh well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Uh, he goes out to his Dustmore here, and I just stay in, trying to get some damage on, and I know that he's probably going to Nightshade or Will-O-Wisp, and I have no way of really, like, wishing anymore, because of course two Nightshades are going to ki uh, kill me, and I don't have Protect, I have Stealth Rock instead. Stealth Rock actually is helping me out, but I might switch to Ste uh, Protect anyways, because actually, in the, on the battles I've had with this team, uh, I haven't really had any pressing need for Stealth Rock specifically. I have Spikes already. I haven't really need for Stealth Rock. But probably, you know, as soon as, um... As soon as I probably replace the Jirachi, I bet you any money, I'm gonna start seeing a bunch of Flyers. I'm gonna start seeing Thunderous. Because, you know, Stealth Rock itself keeps Thunderous in check. Like, a little bit. But if I don't have it, of course it doesn't get hit by Spikes. And, you know, Thunderous is a pain in the ass. So. You know what? I, you know, I'm just gonna keep it. Because that's probably what happened to me. It happens to everyone who always switches moves on teams. All the time. It's, it's the law of Pokemon, I think. But uh, yeah, back to the battle again. I keep getting off track, don't I? I stay in and Fire Blast for no reason. Because, like, that was pretty stupid. I don't know why. Like, obviously, it wasn't going to kill. That's because has pretty decent defenses, and I'm, of course, lowered by two. But, uh, I don't know. I go for the Fire Blast, thinking that maybe I'll burn it or something. Like that. And I go out to my, um, Deoxys D here. And this is kind of an interesting, like, this is where it gets like kind of pretty close. This match really actually was quite close, because and this exchange really is the biggest part of it. Uh, he's gonna go for the attack here, and I go for the nightshade. And this second turn is the most significant one. Now, I could have taunted, but I predicted that he was going to just follow the attack me instead. Now, taunting would have stopped him from healing against Hydreigon, meaning that if Hydreigon somehow lived the. Um, the attack order here, you'd be able to knock it out a second time anyhow. But, I, like, I was pretty confident that I'd be able to kill from here. Okay, so as long as the, the Gift doesn't miss, I should be able to kill, even though he has the one defend order up. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just, it's just it, that was just pretty big there, because if I had not gone for that Nightshade, this would, probably wouldn't have killed, and attack order probably was going to kill Hydreigon. Like, it's bulky because it's a pseudo legend, and most pseudo legends are relatively bulky, but it probably isn't going to leave a stab attack order. But yeah, that's pretty that's much be the match right after that, after I killed that Vespin. So yeah, good game, Frank. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.